Haikyuu is a show that has taken the world by storm and it's on the fourth season right now. Season 5 is supposed to come out sometime. Season 4 part 2 just came out a while ago and uh, it had a bit of backlash for the worse animation quality and uh, different character designs that people didn't appreciate fully. But by the end of the season, it seemed to stabilize, it seemed to become better and it resulted in a good deal of hype. Now, what makes Haikyuu such a good show? More importantly, what makes you resonate with these characters and relate to them? What makes you want to cheer them on and hope that they win? Join us to find out on Weep 101. <laughs> Let's talk about the animation. Haikyuu is animated by Production IG. That means beautiful animation and amazing Sakuga scenes. To get a little technical, anime is usually created at 24 FPS on 2s or 3s, which means each image is 2 or 3 frames long, that is 12 or 8 frames per second. Characters are animated at 12 to 8 FPS and other objects at 8 to 6 FPS. To make things easier, looping animations and such tricks are used. Now we talk about Sakuga. Sakuga are scenes where the animation quality improves drastically without using tricks and animating at a full 24 frames per second. This amps up the dramatic effect and is usually used in most action scenes. Sakuga in Haikyuu stands out during specific scenes where the style evolves from the clean line art to a rough, rugged, inky manga style with more dynamic and expressive movement which exaggerates the action. For example, Oikawa serving, Hinata jumping, Tsukishima blocking, etc. Yasuyuki Kai, the director, used Koichi Kikuta's beautiful strokes and brought them to life. There are other Sakuga moments during the matches and the openings, which are very well done, but don't stand out as much as the other ones mentioned before. The animation adds to the character's personality, using expressions and small actions like fumbling to catch a ball, getting nervous and misstepping. These movements elevate the characters from the manga and add more depth to their personalities. Without a doubt, the matches are the best part of watching Haikyuu. While the anime and the characters are enjoyable, no doubt the matches are what bring the hype. Susumu Mitsunaka the series director has done an amazing job at capturing realistic poses and movements of volleyball players and exaggerating them perfectly, making it look natural. The amount of research and hard work is displayed beautifully during the matches. From Hinata smashing the ball to the other side of the net, to Nishinoya diving across the court yelling, ROLLING THUNDER! Chief Animation Director Takahiro Chiba has done an amazing job with the show. He animating some scenes himself, including the opening and ending Sakuga scenes. The character designs worked very well with the distorted exaggeration during the matches. We can only assume the net and the court were animated in 3D. Masks could have been used to cut the net around the characters. Finding out about the relationship between the characters and the court behind the scenes will be very interesting. The second part of the fourth season was disappointing with a huge drop in production quality and animation. The characters look unrealistic. The same points mentioned in the start of the video were missing and it felt like production had dropped. It might have been the COVID effect, but let's see. We're waiting to see and judge season 5's animation to see if they pick things up again. Okay, that was said with the animation aspect of it. But uh, here I am ready to talk about the next part. So what Haikyuu does really well is the characters. And that's what we're going to focus on from this point onwards. The characters are given a lot of development and well, Humanity, you know, it, it, they're well detailed as it already said. These kids seem to be just that. They are kids, they're impulsive, they're immature, they're awkward, they're unfocused on studies and they're obsessed with the game. That seems to be why we like them so much. I mean, what I described in that last sentence is basically what most of us are, right? That's what weebs are, right? Well, we are like that at least, okay? We get hyped like crazy, we're impulsive, we're immature. We're definitely awkward, we're unfocused on work or studies, and we are obsessed with games and anime, of course. These kids seem to be exactly like us, or what we want to be. They reject the pressure that society puts on them to live normal lives and do what they love to do. Hinata and Kageyama, in specific, go through the immense pain of being left out of a group and then come to slowly realize that they have a new group that they belong to. 
Typically, it's like any other shonen anime where the two protagonists can't stand each other, uh, Sasuke and Naruto. But here's the twist. They have a killer combo together and they have to work on it. They have to perfect it and they have to make it a move that will actually add value to Karasuno's team. Otherwise, they don't have a place in the volleyball team as said by Daichi. When they realize this, you can see a switch go off between the two of them. They might not like each other still, but they figure out how to master their secret weapon despite that. So as time passes, the two start growing closer and closer. Eventually, they start uh, to joke about each other and uh, jokingly insult each other. Uh, but this happens slowly. This happens over like two seasons and it's beautiful to watch. Have you ever noticed someone who either lives with you or you see someone every day and they've lost weight, but you've never really noticed because you've been seeing them every day and it's just gradual. And one day you're like, hey, wow, you've lost a ton of weight. It's like that. That's what it's like with this relationship. They slowly become great friends and by the time they reach that pinnacle of friendship, it seems natural and normal because they've grown on you all this while, like they were close all along. The character development in Haikyuu is quite remarkable and that's not only for Hinata and Kageyama, it works for so many other characters. Let's take a look at our favorite ace of Karasuno and our favorite libero, Asahi and Nishinoya. Individually, they are still well built. Nishinoya has pride, he has talent and he has a strong bond with his teammates. Asahi also has similar characteristics but He's shown to have bowed down to the fear of failure. This is what happens when uh, he's eventually blocked uh, by Datekyo and he doesn't think he can play volleyball again. But this fear of failure is exactly what enables Nishinoya and Asahi to have such a strong sense of character development. Nishinoya flat out refuses to play unless Asahi plays, saying that Asahi is the ace of Karasuno. And Asahi doesn't want to play, but when he eventually does and he gets blocked, Nishinoya is there to stop him from fearing that failure again, from fearing the block and he makes sure to return the ball and make sure to keep the ball in play, keeping the game going, thereby giving Asahi another chance to score, getting his confidence back. In one scene, Nishinoya is basically telling Asahi, let them block you, I'll block them, I'll keep the ball in play and I'll make sure you get as many shots as you want until you succeed. This is very important because this gives Asahi the confidence. He knows, he understands that he might not be able to hit every smash. He might get blocked multiple times, but he knows for sure that his team is right behind him, ready to keep the ball in play, ready to give him another chance and ready to keep giving him chances for as long as it takes until he can finally smash that ball and get that point, winning the game for them. But obviously this works both ways as Nishinoya just doesn't keep the ball in play because that's his job. He really believes in Asahi and he claims that he's the best. So Nishinoya wants to help him. The fact that the man he admires works with him and is trusting him acts as a motivator to help Asahi play better and also cover when a chance gets blocked. Additionally, you have Sugawara and Daichi who also go through their own changes as the first season goes on. Sugawara realizes that Kageyama is too talented. He's basically a prodigy, a genius and will replace him on the main team. Daichi understands this and talks to him about it and Sugawara understands what needs to be done and he takes on a more supporting role instead. Now, this doesn't mean he is not important. He does a lot of work behind the scenes and comes up with like codes and signs for different formations, he, different strategies that the enemies can't figure out. But he's also instrumental in practice games as you know, he's an experienced setter and, he, and can really help a competitive game take place. Finally, Sugawara also acts as a way for Kageyama to get rest and to reset his head in important moments in games, especially like when he was against Oikawa and he got really flustered and he was subbed out and Sugawara took over and made sure that Kageyama had a chance to cool his head so that he, with his skill and his calm mind, he can make quick decisions and help them win the match. The only two who don't get much character development in the first season are Tsukishima and Yamaguchi. But even the little that they do, they are shown to be getting closer to the other team members. They are already close to each other, but they're a little farther away from the other team members. But especially Kageyama and Tsukishima, as they discuss what angles and what speeds would be better for Kageyama to throw the ball and all these things combined make for very relatable characters. So you see, even Tsukishima and Kageyama are very against each other and uh, they're not okay accepting advice or asking help from the other. But this changes slowly over time. So yeah, if you can see these characters change in front of your eyes. We've all had friends that behave certain ways. Uh, maybe they're giving you the cold shoulder or ignore your attempts to connect and talk to you and when you finally get them to talk, you realize that the problem was stupid. It's just some silly little thing that is just nonsensical and you get along just fine. Or a person who might look really, really scary at first, hardy, <coughs> but then turns out to be a very sweet and caring person, not hardy. That's exactly what you love about Haikyuu. 
So that's exactly what you find here. Wholesome moments of friendship which make you reflect on your own experiences or even your past. And of course, when people who understand each other so well and share so much time together, it makes sense that they can play and win even against the best teams that are much higher in skill than they are. It's a team game. Individual skill can only take you so far. Playing together and working together and working with each other's strengths and advantages and disadvantages is what makes teams win. And that's very evident with uh, Kageyama losing terribly despite his insane skill and him being called the king of the court in a very bad way. So with such well fleshed out characters and good animation, we can see why Haikyuu just absolutely sucks in people and keeps them firmly in the hype hand. Okay, look. I did not like season 4 much, but goddamn, I watched season 1 to 3 like 5 times and I loved it. I, I by hearted all the songs. I was basically talking along with dialogues and I'm looking forward to what comes next. I unfortunately came across a spoiler in the manga and I know what happened, so I'm not really happy about that. But uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next season. Hopefully the animation will be better. But that's it for this episode. If you like it, uh, please like, follow and comment to let us know what you think of uh, such videos. We have made a change back. We are no longer doing only long form content. We're going to be putting out one video a day. We're going to be doing short videos, but also longer videos like this one. Not exactly a very long one, but still. If you want to check out some cool videos though, you can check out our Cowboy Bebop video, the tragedy of Cowboy Bebop, uh, which we put out Last week, a really interesting episode goes into what makes Cowboy Bebop such an exciting and such a beautiful show that really sucks you in. So yeah, look forward to more long form content like this and you can look forward to any other video that you're already used to us putting out. In case you're joining us new, then we put out a lot of videos. So yeah, and if you like Haikyuu content in particular, you can let us know in the comments down below because we can make videos specifically about Haikyuu as well. We have a guy called Audi who's like, waiting, itching to do some deep research into volleyball and different strategies and he will do the whole thing. And yeah, we also do podcasts so you can catch us live anytime on Saturdays. Uh, that's it. So see you next time with uh, what makes some other anime suck you in.